Man allows me to make a world creation film. It's a fantasy world. So literally everything has to be made up from James, which is one of the most exciting parts of the process. It's challenging because you're designing a whole different world that we've never seen before. And you're doing it from scratch. In the comic book, they incorporated Atlantis into the storyline of the DC Universe. And I really love to dive into that world and basically create my version of what Atlantis would look like. And so to do that, I have to go further back, give it backstory. And some of it I pull from the mythology and legends that we're familiar with, but other things I get to kind of create my own. Our Atlantis is a civilization that has been around for a long time. They're way more advanced than everyone else was at that time, thousands of years ago. And so I went and talked with my production designer, Bill Bretsky, and just designed the world with him. Me and James, we wanted to make a neoclassic culture that was on the verge of like digital technology. Because they weren't like a primitive culture that went underwater, they're already pretty advanced. But the thing they invented gave them power to live underwater. One of the things I really wanted to jump into early on is just getting the aesthetic correct. And we have an amazing army of concept designers and artists who are so brilliant in what they do and just bring them on board early on and just talking to them about the look, the style and the kind of flavor that I'm going on for the wall. I'm a very hands-on designer. I love drawing myself. And so I'll kind of <laughs> get in there, you know, kind of, you know, be behind their shoulders and kind of go, oh, what about you know, if we draw the trident more like this? Maybe uh, the skinny up. It might look better, right? It might look more dangerous and yeah. more pointy. You know, that's just the process that I love, drawing and designing this incredibly vivid and lush world. Hey, Those early days of us sitting in a room with a bunch of artists and James just coming up with, what about this and what if this is the way the city were, it was really exciting. The Royal Guards are only in the Royal Palace, right? Or anywhere anything related like the Coliseum, but we don't see them outside of that. We don't ever see them in battles or anywhere else. As a director, I try to put myself in the shoe of an Atlantean and go, what is a date in the life of an Atlantean look like? How do they eat? How do they sleep? How do they use the bathroom? <laughs> and so you have to think about all that stuff, and all that stuff then affects, you know, the world that you're trying to create. Here in the surface world, you know, we built things out of materials such as brick, wood, metal. They don't necessarily have that down there. And so we're trying to pull a lot of influences from the ocean. The idea that maybe their buildings are very much like coral, that they're grown, perhaps, right? And how does that work? And is it a living thing that they live inside? Is the building just glowing with bioluminescent glow? They're so deep down that sunlight doesn't penetrate the ocean at that depth. So what provides the light source? That's the kind of stuff that we have to really dig deep into. The development on this movie was a huge effort. It was just amazing the amount of stuff that came out of James's mind. This part here, when it's like this, it blocks the yeah, yeah it blocks the point of impact. And he's not going to settle for anything that isn't exactly what he was hoping for. So I think we're going more towards the sky. Good. I've got it. Going to this, I knew that it would be super visual effects heavy. And I don't think there is one frame in this movie that isn't touched by visual effects in some ways. Through the sort of post-production process of working on the visual effects, working on the CGI, we started fine-tune and hone the look. We started out doing renditions of what an underwater environment would look like. And we had to really leverage other aspects that will be visual cues to the audience that we are indeed underwater. Just trying to go, okay, at what point does this look like water? And one of the things we found through our discovery process is we constantly need just particles floating, floating particulates. So we always have this particulate in our water volume. And you'll notice that as the characters move through the water volumes, that particulate moves around them and it moves with them. That really helped to remind the audience that they're underwater. And of course, you know, the flowing hair really helps that. 
one of the most important visual cues for underwater was what we did with the hair. I mean, we knew going into this that the hair was going to be difficult, but I don't think anyone appreciated how difficult it was going to be. In an underwater environment, all the hair just sort of tends to do its own thing, and this created for incredible computational hurdles to overcome. ILM actually rewrote their software trying to design this. I mean, there's over 500 shots in the movie where we had to add hair to our characters. Oh, I was planning that. Plan is to not get killed. Very early on in the process, James and I had a long discussion about how we're going to be dealing with talking underwater. Wait, you can talk underwater? Hey, I can talk underwater too. This is awesome. And what we wound up doing was thinking about how we talk. We make sounds by exhaling air over our vocal cords. So they have adapted their vocal cords to make noise when water is passed over them. When they exhale water, they make sounds the same way we do when we talk through the air. Oh, we can do more than just talk. So everything visual would start from the seed of the story concept. When you know your characters really well, when you know your world really well, it makes it easier for you to kind of visually design the world. James has a very clear vision of what he wants to do, but then he'll turn to you and say, what do you think? And then he listens, and he's very much a best idea wins kind of director, but definitely the captain of the ship at the same time. Pretty good. Let's cut. Let's roll right into another one. Filmmaking is such a difficult task, and it's great when we work together because we all want to make a great film. And action! I'm such a big fan of the superhero universe and science fiction movies and those big giant Japanese kaiju films and I felt that this movie really allows me to touch on all these different worlds that I love that I'm such a fan of and definitely it was such an honor for me to get the opportunity to create this film.